Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Jean Paul. I'm one of three founders of Akanu. Um, before um, I started Akanu a year ago, I wrote my PhD on uh, the impact of overconfidence on the evaluation of innovation. So that's probably a pretty German preparation for starting your own company. Um, What is the kind of problem that we are addressing with Akanu? We are addressing the biggest problem of e-commerce, which is growing sales. Um, and that is pretty trivial, try, trying to grow sales. A lot of people try to do that. But the way um, service providers have mainly done that over the last couple of years is by bringing more visitors to e-commerce sites. But Everyone is online now, competition in e-commerce is ever increasing, so every additional euro or dollar or whatever revenue you, uh, currency you wish uh, is spent on an additional visitor is becoming, is becoming less valuable. So another important aspect is more coming into focus, which is converting the visitors that are on site. Right now, e-commerce on average has a conversion rate of 3%. That means three out of 100 visitors are becoming customers. Now, that that is not good, um, I, want to, I want to explain with a little analogy. Um, what you see in the picture there is a very traditional Hamburg-based retailer for formal menswear. And as you may see on the image, if you enter that store on your own, you can't, you wouldn't be able to pick anything on your own because everything is mixed, the sizes, the colors, just everything's mixed. You can't, you would never buy something. But what happens, you enter the store and you're directly addressed by a very experienced salesperson who knows very well where you're in your buying process, in your decision-making process. Um, do you already know what kind of product you're going to buy? Are you maybe looking at different competing, competing stores also? Um, are you someone to haggle? Are you someone where, who you can upsell to? Um, and they see that and they res respond to that. And I never left the store without buying something and I hardly ever leave this store without, bu without, with, without buying more than I intended to do. And that happens to everyone. I mean, Nico, you're from Hamburg. Have you been to Pöllecke? Have you ever left Pöllecke without? See? And taking this 100% or even higher conversion rate in revenue terms um, into the online world is what we do with Akanu. We connect visitors of online shops with tailor-made incentives. What can incentives be? Of course, they can be rebates, they can be coupons, but they can also be highlighting the qualitative benefits of a certain store for visitors who may be looking also at competitors um, or giving um, a, um, a size, size helping, size assistant to people who are likely to purchase a couple of products and then send half of them back, which is also a very, very big problem for e-commerce, as most of you will know. Um, and that is what we do. We show the right incentive at the right person, depending on the behavior and the character characteristics of the visitor, and increase revenues. Um, and that is a very abstract picture of what we do. I think the best way to demonstrate that what we do makes sense is to um, cite a customer. This is the uh, CEO of Otto Netherlands. It's not Otto, Otto Germany yet, but it's also a uh, high eight-digit figure online revenue. And he says Akanu has built a technology that significantly increases sales and profits um, for us, for our online shop. And that is not only what he says, but that is also what other clients already say. Um, and for those of you who are not aware, there are some companies there, for example, Collins. It's a newly launched online shop with a 100 million uh, euro funding and with the goal to be the most innovative from the inside uh, online e-commerce business in Germany at least and maybe beyond. And they already acquired us and or, or not acquired us but buy um, license take pay for our technology to use it um, although they wanted to develop it inside so it's a kind of a, a nice proof of concept for us besides the other clients that are there um, now what makes us unique and what lets us be here at the, at the data days um, Basically, our process works in three steps. First, we define the incentives, the kind of messages that we need. Then we do a process, and if there are experts here, maybe that's a little bit more interesting for you. We can discuss the details afterwards. We do a sequential pattern mining. That means we identify unique 
patterns of behavior that, are, that, have to, that, that happen in relevant amounts on the shops. Then we use another method, which are called multi-armed bandit systems, which match the incentives with the patterns of behavior. Now, what the beauty is that patterns are reoccurring between shops. And once we have matched working incentives with patterns and we have found out they work, we increase the performance with each new visitor and with each new client that we get on site. So this creates a good barrier for us against competition, but also against the re-engineering of our clients. Um, and we developed that with leading researchers in and HU Berlin, um, Professor Dr. Lessmann, and also with uh, complementary industry providers who allow us to develop our technology with their clients, like Intershop. Um, the market is large. We are targeting um, high-margin online retail, so fashion, accessories, jewelry, and shops with revenues above 30 million euros, because that's where um, our costs are low per increased revenue. That's where we have fun. Um, we currently increase revenues by 2.5% overall. That uh, generates 750,000 euro additional revenue per year. And on that, we take a commission. So we only benefit if our clients benefit. I didn't say that before. Um, the additional revenue is always measured against valid statistical control groups. So our clients really know and have the, have the um, have the validity that it's really additional um, revenue. Of that market, we have currently in our sales pipeline qualified 4 billion of revenue. We're already talking with 2 billion of revenue and negotiating, although one of within that 2 billion is a big uh, Berlin-based fashion retailer who just had his IPO yesterday. So. Um, <laughs> There are big significant parts in that. Um, but again, we've already acquired 700 million of customer revenue. So we are there in the market and we've started a year ago. So we're gaining traction and we're acquiring clients from our competitors, from the US competitors who have been in that market for a while, even before us. And we're acquiring them cheaply. So we pay 7,000 euro to acquire a customer, but expecting a customer lifetime of 24 months, which isn't too optimistic, which may be longer, I, I think. Um, we have a lifetime value, so we earn 120,000 euros per customer. Now, why am I here? Um, because we want to grow. And right now, everyone, every big, large e-commerce retailer has on his map predictive behavior on-site targeting. We need to do that. And now we are just starting to earn the money. And we have a time where we hire a salesperson. That salesperson gets the first client we implement with the first client, and after then, six, seven months, the first client starts to pay. And if we want to take that market now, if we want to use the superior superiority of our technology to conquer the world, um, we need an investor with um, experience and with the ability to help us conquer that market. So this is a little outlook for anyone interested to talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what do you have to say? Oh, what was the title of your thesis again? Um, <laughs> the real title is Judgmental Biases in the Evaluation of Innovations Experiments with Information Markets. Awesome. <laughs> uh, because uh, because what, I, what struck me, you know, uh, very good presentation. I like the approach. There's a lot of good thinking and uh, value in that, you know, so to, to say that first. but. Uh, you know, the, the example with the Hamburg uh, shop you gave uh, okay. and, you know, the, uh, you, you kind of promised um, to go from 3% conversion rate to 100%, right? That was kind of the opening story. Um, and the examples you gave, I know that 2.5% uplift in overall uh, is, uh, is really good, you know, I, I know that, you know, but it's it's so far away from the initial promise so that it really reminded me of, of your of your thesis uh, <laughs> uh, oh <yeah. laughs> um, and it, and it's i don't i just want to give it as a joke uh, there, there's one thing I, I, that strikes me that something i it's just my feeling is missing you know uh, if you compare 
what you are doing with the, this old man in the shop. It's not just that he achieves 100% conversion rate or even more. Um, it's, I, I can't even give it a name, you know, but I, I, my feeling is you, you should go further in, I mean, it, there should be 10% uplift. I know that you would love it, that too, but I, I, I think something in a sense is missing what would get you closer to the behavior of that old man in the shop. Um, mm. You mean something that we can never accomplish to replicate? I don't in, know, in but uh, uh, at least I would say I, I like the ambition, uh, you know, the, the exactly the one that you started with, you know, to say this can work. Mm -hmm. uh, it works in the real world, and you gave a nice example, very good. And uh, I think you should try to keep that ambition, you know, and say, okay, so far with our first prototype, whatever, we achieved 2.5. Of course, we want mm -hmm. to achieve 80%, uh, and we're working on that. Or uh, if it's completely not doable and rubbish to say that, I would skip uh, the promise at the beginning because yeah. it's, uh, you know, yeah. That's a very good feedback. So I didn't mean to, to, give, uh, to give the promise that, that we will achieve 100% conversion. Mm. Of course, that's a vision. Perhaps you should. But <coughs> yeah, I Investors like don't believe me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, sorry. Directly to that? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I like the, the Pollock example um, because what he didn't say is that stores, I think, <laughs> two, two or three floors and uh, about, I don't know, 10 rooms, like small rooms, and it's all packed, um, like the whole wall up to the ceiling, it's like mostly three rows of, um, of suits, and there's like no system for you. You, you can't really do it by yourself. And you go in there, and they say, oh, what, what do you need? And you say, I don't know, um, um, I need a suit for, for a wedding, or whatever. And they take exactly where you have to go. They show you five suits and say, you know, this would really fit you. This is a little more expensive. I would take that. And they really break it down for you, the whole complexity. And um, that's what I like about, about um, the whole idea is because you try to break down uh, some of the complexity of online shopping that, you know, you help people decide, you know, whether they want to buy this now and, you know, help them, you know, stay on the side. So um, I think the comparison is, is not that off. Yeah. Just one thought, Moto Moto, you know, and these curated shopping guys, they are perhaps closer to, the, uh, besides that they get impressive conversion rates, right? Perhaps that gets closer to what mm -hmm. these uh, old men, I'm not meaning you, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, is doing in the shop. Wonderful <laughs> yeah. green tweed jacket once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the guys you're talking about now, uh, but I will have to admit or I have to say I liked your presentation, I liked your approach, I liked the idea, I liked the business model or the business case behind you showed us. So nearly full stop. Uh, just a question that really got it right and I'm not just dreaming of mm -hmm. it. Um, the technical yeah, approach um, you told or you explained mm -hmm. to us there's no need for concrete personal data, right? No, it's first-party cookies, but it's no uh, IP address saving. So it, it's, it's no personal uh, data. Yeah, no. okay, yeah, uh, fine. I like it, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> the, maybe, maybe to give you a critical point, we thought we were zero to one, so we thought we were that what Peter Thiel does, but uh, we were not the only ones who, tho who, who thought that uh, last year. So right now, there's a race, but we're pretty good in that race technology. Yeah. Race, yeah. Well, my input is this. I think there's good online shops and there's bad ones. I think a good one is Net-A-Portier. I think their average sales, obviously it's very niche. Average sales is um, for their customers, they, the customers buy about $14,000 worth of fashion a, a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, average household income is 180,000. So I think there's a case where it's, the, the problem with Otto and these other things that you mentioned, to me they're kind of a dying breed. You know, just because they're generic, they're made for everybody. And the, the, the context itself about, about buying, it's just not really inspiring, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why they have to try to do something with Collins or whatever. That being said, I'm, I'm wondering why your system, what, what is your killer technology or killer thing that makes you different that someone like Otto or someone at wherever could, could replicate? Why don't they do that themselves? The retailer? Yeah, yeah. Because we learn across retailers. Okay, so you're just aggregating all the data, the knowledge, and then you apply That's that. That's our competitive edge. That's your so edge, So it's not okay. just 
uh, aggregating, but out of that aggregation comes our competitive edge because okay. we know more than every single retailer. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. We still have two minutes, three okay. minutes. Are there any questions from the audience? Nothing more to say from the jury? All right, well then, 